Have you seen those before and after photos of people who are taking glutathione supplements and they may be a Fitzpatrick 4 through 6 and then you see the after photo and they become a 1 through 3? Well, they may be taking those glutathione supplements or even more drastically in some countries, they are taking the intravenous glutathione supplements. Now, there's plenty of clinical studies that, and they're varied results. Some of them say that they work, other ones say that they don't know the long-term effects of it, so it's not, uh, they don't recommend it. But today we're gonna be talking about glutathione, which is one of the most powerful the body's own antioxidant that exists in almost 99% of healthy cells. It's also water soluble, low molecular weight, and it also consists of tripeptide 3 amino acids. So glutamate, cysteine, and glycine. Now glutathione is actually found in two forms. The first one is GSH or reduced glutathione, and that's the one that's found in 98, 99% of the healthy cells in the body. GSSH is the oxidized glutathione. The GSH or the reduced glutathione has been known to reduce liver abnormalities as well as diabetic related issues. It also protects from viral infections and anti-tumor activities. Now in the skincare industry, glutathione has been used for skin lightening effects as well as antioxidant effects such as skin firming. So according to one study, how glutathione works is it inhibits tyrosinase activity during melanogenesis. So while making the melanin glutathione, what it does is it takes the eumelanin, which is the black brownish pigment, and converts it to pheomelanin, which is a red yellow pigment. Now I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of this clinical study, so if you want to see that, the link will be in the description below in my blog or in the description. Okay, so this clinical study actually took 30 Filipino women with a Fitzpatrick of 4 and 5. And they took glutathione loz lozenges orally. And within a few weeks, they did show some mild to moderate effects of lightening um, in their skin. Now, based on three separate clinical trials, what they concluded was the systemic glutathione was not as effective as actual skin whitening agents. Now, they did not name the actual skin whitening agent, so we don't know if it was a skin bleaching. They said skin bleaching ingredient, so I'm going to assume it was hydroquinone, but they didn't actually name the other ingredients that they compared it to. So for those of you who are who asked the question about the intravenous glutathione, what they concluded was that as soon as the um, subjects stopped taking the glutathione, both the supplements and the intravenous treatments, that their skin tone or the skin color or the hyperpigmentation actually eventually came back. So they concluded that these results are not sustainable. So again, if you are liking this type of video where I am bringing in supplements, clinical trials, and skincare products, then please give us a thumbs up letting us know this is the type of video that you like. And if you know of someone who is considering a drastic treatment with the glutathione, then please share this video. Paracone MD FX Acyl Glutathione has the Deep Crease Serum and the Smoothing and Brightening Under Eye Cream both with the acyl glutathione and the vitamin F blend. So the Pericone MD Deep Crease Serum comes in a pipette, just like this. So this serum, just so you know, is not a water-based serum. As you can see, it is a cream-based serum, and that's part of the vitamin F that's in there. So if you notice, it is lighter than a milky lotion, which most cream-based serums are, but this I'm not lighter, sorry, it's a heavier base, so it's, it's cream. So stay tuned for the pro tip. So this is the Paracone MD. This is the brightening under eye cream. And as you can see, it's thick and it's in a jar. My personal preference is I don't like jars because in order to scoop out the product, 
I have to expose the entire product to air every time instead of dispensing it individually. And if you notice in there, I have to use sometimes my nail to scoop it out, which it's impossible to get out all the bacteria underneath my nail. So after this video or after this, I'm actually going to cut my nails. I had to actually grow them out so that you could see how the, the, um, the hair growth supplement worked. But anyway, so this one is the eye cream. So we're gonna be focusing on skincare products that actually have the glutathione and the vitamin F together. If you don't know what vitamin F is, then click on the link above or in the description below and how it helps fight wrinkles. Hi, my name is Christy and I have been treating clients professionally with hyperpigmentation, acne, and other skin conditions for now it's actually almost 13 years. And I, the question I get a lot of times is, how do I layer serums? Now this serum in particular, the Paracone MD, Deep Crease Serum was specifically formulated to address the number 11 lines, the forehead lines, the marionette lines or smile lines or frown lines or crow's feet. And this, if you notice, like I said, was a cream-based serum. So step one, this is actually a response to my clients. So step one is if you're going to be using a cream, oops, a cream serum, just like this, what you would do first is if you are using an antioxidant serum that is fluid, such as a vitamin C serum, you would put this on first, and if you're using a hyaluronic acid serum, or a hydrating serum, that would go on next after the vitamin C serum has absorbed so you're not diluting the surface area with this. Now when you put this on, you don't have to wait until it's fully absorbed, okay, because it doesn't have any active ingredients. If your hyaluronic acid serum is mixed with other active ingredients, then you, this is not the protocol to do it, okay? So you put this on next, then if you are doing a machine area where you're using the gel, that's where you would interrupt and do that next. The final step is then you would take the deep crease serum here. And you can see my, my face is still kind of shiny. Then you would apply the cream serum on top. I actually start from the neck, but the way that I'm doing it, I'm not real, actually, this is not really the way that I do it, but I just am show, trying to show you the, so you would never do a light therapy or any type of home machine on top of cream serum. So after you put this on, if you are using a cream based eye cream, that would go on next. If you're using a water-based eye gel, then you'd have to put that on before you put on your cream-based serum. But because this eye cream that we talked about for the eye brightening is a cream-based, it's heavier, after you put on the serum, then you put on your eye cream. And then after you put on your eye cream, which I already did in my other video, then you can do toner if you want, or if you want to put it after the hyaluronic acid. And then after you finally put on your cream. This one is not part of the glutathione because um, it was sold out, um, but I was using the face finishing and firming moisturizer. So I did notice with this, using this ingredient, I did notice an overall more even skin tone. Um, I, I don't, if someone has the melasma or some really deep hyperpigmentation, I don't think this is going to do as much for it. So um, I did see, and the texture was definitely firm um, using this. But I don't know if it's because I'm using the Myolift, I included that in the protocol, or I have been, or it's because I'm using this 
face finishing and firming moisturizer. But my texture was definitely tighter. It's more even, even toned um, with this product. However, if you're using this moisturizer, I didn't really find as much hydration with this moisturizer. There's probably other ones in the line for that because it says face finishing and firming. So I think it's concentrated more on that. Okay, so I'm trying to point out to you the side here. I've used about half or a little less than half here. So I've allowed it for a significant amount of time to see the results of this. I did see an overall even tone, but as far as lightening for hyperpigmentation or melasma, I'm not sure that these would be the products that would be best fit for you, but as far as skin texture and tone overall, I did see a little bit of improvement on there. The con of this is, is that the scent, I have a very sensitive nose, and so it, to me it smells like a very heavy European perfume kind of a scent in there. So if you are sensitive to heavy scents, this may not be for you. Um, but obviously I was able to use it um, a significant amount of time, so it wasn't um, you know, off-putting or anything like that. If you are interested in any of the products on Skin Store, Skin Store was nice enough to supply the products for me. Um, you can get 25% off any of the products on Skin Store with some exclusions that apply and the link will be located in the description below. Um, I was not paid. Obviously, this is a honest review because I did point out some pros and some cons. So if you'd like to go ahead and try out that product, because remember, makeup is an art, skincare is a science.